Hey guys, this is Neo once again from the Overclock Magazine. So here's another episode of Talking Smack About Tech. I don't know if it's episode 2, episode 3, or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. It's been a while, but I'm back. So I've been doing some really interesting testing for me, which I thought would be very different for the upcoming 13th Gen Core Magazine. So you know that the Overclocker presents 12th Gen Core. I put out that magazine like two months ago, like a retrospective of 12th Gen. So the 13th Gen Core Magazine is coming December 5th. So with that, I decided to do something a bit different. So I'm going to do some XOC, like extreme overclocking on hopefully a really good motherboard that's appropriate for that sort of thing. But that remains to be seen. But more than that, uh, the overclocking that I did for my official 13th gen core CPU review was a little bit different than what I would usually do. So normally, I think for most people, you just want to see how much more performance you can add to a CPU and so far we've seen some really impressive results like the really good cpus i've seen are able to take the p cores all the way to like 5.7 gigahertz and the e cores equally high to 4.5 4.6 or something like that unfortunately the cpu sample that i have which is just a random sample only has an sp score of 94 right i forgot what the actual p core sp is but that's that is it's really that low so i wasn't going to get really anywhere trying to achieve that 5.7 gigahertz but what i did manage to achieve is an all core clock of 5.6 gigahertz and for the equals 4.4 gigahertz again that in and of itself is not interesting in the least but what makes it interesting is that I was able to do this while reducing the amount of heat the CPU is putting out. And as I said to you, increasing the performance and how I was able to do that was just stay locked under the 253 watt PL2 limit. For instance, on the ROG boards, you turn off MCE or at least you select the Intel rules or the Intel reference design then it will never go above that. But with that, you also get reduced performance because out the box, mostly most motherboards and particularly the one I'm using, which is the ROG Z790 uh, Maximus Extreme. Uh, look out for that review, by the way. That motherboard out the box will allow the CPU to draw upwards of 300 watts, probably up to 320 watts. In fact, I think that's still within some sort of Intel spec. I'm not really sure at this point, but that is available to you however if you allow it to do that it does run into thermal throttling and i've seen this across many reviews of the cpus and and, and so forth the cpu will easily go get to 96 97 sometimes even 100 degrees centigrade and with that it will also be drawing 320 watts or 319 watts whatever it is and that's a lot of power that's a lot of heat and for effectively yes you do get a performance gain but i was wondering can i get the similar performance but without breaking the or rather going above the 253 watt pl2 limit and i was actually able to do that which is what got me excited because i was able to do 5.6 gigahertz as i said on the p cores and do 4.4 gigahertz on the e cores but with that i was still able to stay under 253 watts and as a result, I was still running my CPU. I think the CPU max is actually 91, 91 degrees. Not only did I reduce the temperature, uh, reduce the power that the system is using, but I also gained performance. That's a three out of three, actually. You know, that's that's a three out of three. I couldn't be more happier with that. So I will bring you more details on that in the official review of the 13th Gen Core in the actual magazine that comes out December 5th. Check that out. But until then, um, I'll see you guys on the flip side and look forward to the next review. Peace.